This is a relay. A very common component in modern automobiles. You use them for a lot of different things. whole intent behind a relay is to allow us to turn on and off a circuit that has a high current load with a smaller current. So we'll use a small amount of amperage to control a circuit that requires a lot of amperage. The reason we want to do that is because high amperage circuits would require real heavy duty switches which uh, would be difficult to integrate into the interior of a modern car. That's why we use relays. Now relays are very very common in circuits where we have things like electric fuel pumps, uh, power windows, electric water pumps, electric fans. We use them in aftermarket applications for nitrous solenoids and things like that. So they're all over the place in cars, trucks. So this relay is a pretty good representation of a Bosch style five terminal relay. It's rated to 30 amps and uh, that means that this can control a current up to 30 amps. Uh, beyond 30 amps and you would have to get a relay that could handle more current. Let's look real quickly at this relay. You'll notice on the bottom, and I know it's kind of hard to see, but each one of these terminals on the bottom has a number. This is 86, 30, 85, 87, and the center terminal is 87A. That's important because the terminal numbers tell us how this relay should be wired. So, the other thing you'll see on a lot of relays is there's a diagram on the side, and this one's difficult to see. This diagram will give us a pretty good idea, again, how these circuits are supposed to go together and how they're supposed to work. But let's draw this out. All right, let's begin by looking at each one of the terminals. And I'm going to put terminal number 86, terminal number 85. Separate over here, terminal 37, or 30, 87A and 87. Now there's a reason why I separated those out a little bit. This section of the relay on this side, so from here over, this is our control side. What that means is that whatever circuit I'm going to use to control the load is going to be operated off of these two terminals, 86 and 85. All right, 86 could be our voltage source terminal, and we can have a switch either on the power side or the ground side. It doesn't matter. In the relay itself, we have an inductor, and then next to the inductor is a resistor. The resistor and diode here allows this thing to be directional. When I talk about an inductor, what I'm really saying is that I have a coil of wire. So this coil of wire right here is connected to terminals 86 and 85. What happens is when I put current into 86 and out 85, then I create a magnetic field around this coil of wire. And when I create this magnetic field, what that does is pulls this contact from the normally open position to the closed position. So what that is, that's a switch. That's all that is, is just a switch. So when we energize this thing and create this current right here, magnetic field, switch comes over to this position, and now I'm going to turn things on. That brings us to this side of the relay. Pin 30, 87A, and 87. For this style of relay, the normal position, so no current flowing, flowing through 86 and 85, is from 30 to 87. I have voltage in, and then here I could put a load on 87A if I wanted, that's generally not what you see. Generally, what we have 
is our load over here at pin 87. So now I can draw this line here. I've got my load, whatever it may be. Maybe it's a nitrous solenoid, electric water pump, electric fuel pump, whatever. When I bring current through 86 and through 85, then what happens is my switch goes from 30 to 87 and I now allow current to go from here to here and to my load. So let's take a quick look at how that actually works. I got a motor right here and I'm going to wire this motor up. First thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and uh, set up a switch to this battery. So I'll find some jumper wires here that'll allow me to do that. Alright. <clears throat> switch in and then I need to go from the switch to my relay and we'll just use this relay right here. So from here to this relay and I want to go to pin 86 which in this case is right there. From pin 86 I'm going to go through the coil and back out pin 85. So I need to take pin 85 here back over to ground. So there's the relay now hooked up to the switch and the battery. Now, I need to set the load up. I need to get this motor set up. So I'm going to go ahead and take power again from the battery. And since I'm going into a pretty heavy load, I am going to fuse this circuit. It's just a 10 amp fuse, but it'll be plenty for the short period of time that this thing's going to run. Assuming I can hook all this crap up. All right. Now, the load I need my power to the load coming in on pin 30, which is this pin right here. So I'm going to hook that up to 30. Okay. Then, like I said, with this particular relay, the normal position has continuity between pin 30 and pin 87A. Well, I need this thing to operate, not all the time, but when I turn it on with the switch, so I need to hook the load itself up to pin 87. So we'll take a jumper wire, go to pin 87, and then just hook that motor up to the wire going to pin 87. And then I'm going to take another jumper wire and put the motor back to ground. So, up, jumper wire there, and connected to the battery. All right, so now there's my circuit. And it's kind of ugly, but it'll work. So, if everything is working properly, when I turn the switch on, we should see this switch right here engage, and when it does, the motor should run. Right now, I'm just doing that by hand. Watch the motor. See, I can just do that by hand, but that's not very uh, convenient for us when we're driving down the road. So we use a switch. There we go. All right, switch on, and then this switch is rotating over, and the motor runs. So do that again. See the switch in the relay move, motor run, okay. Everything seems to be working normally. That's pretty much how we're going to set up a relay. Now, there may be some situations where you may want to put maybe a light bulb or something like that off of terminal 87A. Really, the only reason you would do that would be if you had a situation where maybe you wanted to have a light on to tell you that something was going to be you know, off, and then the light would go off when it was on, I don't know. But it could be done. Now you can see I'm hooked up to 87A and the bulb is operating even though 
our switch here is in the off position. So the switch off means that the relay is not energized and the bulb's operating. But when I energize the relay, again, let's look at that switch, the, in the relay the bulb should go off and the motor should run. That's exactly what's going on. Bulb off, motor runs. The switch in the relay engages. All right, so I know this is a pretty nasty looking mess of wires. It looks confusing, but really, when you start wiring these things up, they're really pretty simple and they're extremely useful. So relays, again, they're all over the place in modern vehicles and uh, knowing how to hook them up, set them up, and do it properly is pretty important for anybody working on cars these days.